Hello, 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 and welcome to Jen's Books. How are you doing? I hope you're having a really good week. This video is part of a new series in which I talk about writers that I think you'd enjoy, um, or if you've already read them, you might want to revisit. And hopefully it's going to be a real mixture of writers, but this particular episode is focusing on Angela Carter. Um, Angela Carter was a really, really prolific writer in the 20th century. Uh, the Guardian is in one of the, the top 50 writers, British writers, um, at the end of um, the 21st century. She's hugely influential. Unfortunately, she passed away in 92. But while she was with us, she wrote a huge amount of, um, you know, short stories, novels, uh, journalism, radio plays. Uh, you know, she was really, really prolific and poetry as well, actually. And so there's lots to really, really enjoy. So Angela Carter was also a, a lecturer and she worked at many different universities, including UEA, which I think I might say was the first university to, to have a, an MA in creative writing in the UK. So a hugely influential um, writer both as a writer but also as an educator as well but I just really 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 love her work and I said there's loads to pick from but in this particular video I'm just going to focus <coughs> but in this particular video I'm just going to focus on five of my favourite books and they're not going to be in any particular order actually um, because I'd like to sort of think about them in the in the order of which I was in, introduced to them so the first Angela Carter book that I was introduced to was as a student, and that's The Bloody Chamber. And that was in, initially published in 1979, and it's a collection, really slim collection of short stories. And these are sort of reworkings of fairy tales. So they're a genre that's quite familiar when you read them, but they're a reworking and they're quite feminist in their take. So um, Angela Carter here is, is giving more... Um, power to the to the sort of often quite um, passive female leads in in the fairy tales and my absolute favourite in this collection and we we're introduced to you know all sorts of of, of well known um, fairy tale characters a snow child and um, we have Red Riding Hood um, and all sorts of others but my absolute favourite is The Bloody Chamber which is the, the short story for which the collection is named and that's the longest short story in this little collection and it's the story of Bluebeard um, who you may know is a character um, who marries a wife and gives her freedom you know he has lots of money she can go anywhere in the house apart from a particular room and he gives her a set of keys um, uh, to explore the house but curiosity gets the worst of her um, and when he's away she goes into the locked room and finds the bodies of all his previous wives um, and it sort of all sorts of starts to unravel at that point but they're really sensual and um, you know seductive they're really vivid Angela Carter every word counts you know and the atmosphere in these books is just fabulous if you love the gothic if you love fairy tale and magic realism which Angela Carter is probably best known for you will love this collection it's just really beautifully written I mean this copy has loads of um, bits and pieces underlined but here's just one description his wedding gift clasped around my throat a choker of rubies two inches wide like an extraordinarily precious slit throat and and it's full of those sorts of really rich and sensory images um and that the, it's really really quick to read but she really brings the sort of fairy tales and these characters particularly the female characters to life and empowers them and i really really love this from the first time i read it and as you can tell from the state of the copy it's been well thumbed um so yeah that was the first book i was introduced to and uh, you know at least one of these has been changed into a film uh, adapted into into a film it was the company of wolves um adapted into a film in the past so yeah really really beautiful if you like short stories and you like the gothic and you like the fairy tale these are just fabulous in my top 10 collection of short stories easily easily the second book that i wanted to talk about and as i say there are loads to select from is um 
the Magic Toy Shop, which is probably my, well, it is, it's my favourite novel by Angela Carter. And this is my beautiful special cover that I that I picked up from a, from a high street. I've got a couple of copies of this and it was published in 1967. And again, you've got these sort of real links with fairy tale and mythology. And she's a master of a craft in terms of magic realism, of taking the everyday and making it feel uncanny, making it feel strange. So in this story, we're introduced to Melanie. And the first time we meet Melanie, she's... Um, stealing her mother's wedding dress and climbing out of the window into the apple tree and uh, it's it's a really uh, such a vivid image that stayed with me um, so clearly I can still see it it's just really evocative and and uh, gothic and and it sort of sets up a sense of foreboding for the whole of the the novel um, Melanie becomes an orphan with her little sister Victoria and little brother Jonathan and they're sent to live with um, her uncle, uh, who Uncle Philip, who's rather an odd character, incredibly creepy, and his wife Margaret, their aunt, who is their aunt by blood, and she's a mute, she doesn't speak, she lives in so much fear of Uncle Philip that she only passes notes to Melanie. Um, and then they also have two cousins that, that live with them, two red-headed cousins. And the, the really creepy thing about the where they're sent to live with their uncle is that he runs a toy shop and it, you think immediately a toy shop somewhere fun, um, enjoyable, full of laughing children. But this toy shop is bizarre and creepy. And he creates, he specialises in life-size puppets. And that probably tells you what you need to know. It's really creepy. And he's really manipulative and controlling. And Melanie thinks this is an opportunity for her to start a life afresh. That he wants her to work um, in the toy shop with him. And it's all about what happens from there. Really, I don't want to give too much away, but again, there's this real sense of uh, sort of dark and seediness, and um, it, there's real links with mythology. And she's incredibly lyrical. Every line, as I say, in her writing counts. It's just incredibly uh, beautiful. But um, <clears throat> uh, the first line: the summer she was fifteen, Melanie discovers she was made of flesh. Oh, and blood and it's just it's just fabulous it's also like a coming of age story in, in the most brutal way possible um but magical realism and it feels sort of fairy tale as well there are elements about this book that some people might find um a, a quite troubling so do sort of look into it a little bit further but i absolutely adore this book for the sort of the gothic tropes in it i think it's beautiful um, the third book I wanted to mention is another one that I read at university and it's actually the last book that Angela Carter wrote and it's called Wise Children um, and it was published in 1991 and this is really quite a sort of dark humour filled book about two sisters called Dora and Nora and they're looking back in their 70s to their childhood and their, and their lives um, up to that time so they were working as minor actresses but there's this real mystery about their um, parents and that they are convinced that their biological father is actually a Shakespearean actor a really famous Shakespearean actor in the book called Perry Hazard and um, his life kind of intersects with uh with theirs in in sort of the most amusing way so it's bouncing between the past and the present throughout as um uh, dora tells us her story in in the form of a memoir but it's it's really funny um you know it's it's crass at times and it's full of twists and turns and past and present as i say intersecting into one another and if you like books that sort of have a sense of of history to them you know this tell you a lot and considering it's quite a short book as well it packs a lot in the next book i wanted to mention um is one that she's probably most well known for maybe after the bloody chamber and that is knights of the circus which was published in 1984 and this really embraces the sense of carnival and the grotesque in a, in a um <laughs> in a not very subtle way in this story, it's, it's set at the turn of the uh, 19th to the 20th century, so 1899. And there's a journalist called Jack Walter, and he is going undercover as a clown in a circus. See, it it's already sounds amazing. Um, to investigate the mystery of this um, aerialist called Sophie Feathers, who 
rumour has it she's part dove and part woman um but oh sorry part swan and part woman um but he wonders whether she's 100 percent fraud so basically he infiltrates his the circus to try and find out whether or not it's real whether she can fly or whether it's all a story um and it, the the book follows that journey and um, but there's a real interesting uh sort of insight into her life and she talks about how she was abandoned as a baby because um you know of being parts one um and how she was brought up in a brothel um and then she was sort of like a muse and then she worked in a freak show and then she sort of becomes part of this um circus so it's a really really rich atmospheric read um again lots of dark humor like um like wise children and angela carter's really good at that at, at, at creating very sort of dark atmospheres and then injecting them with humor and that's where uh, camilla gradova who wrote um paradise sort of really reminded me of her writing one of the reasons i love that book that came out this year um, the last book I wanted to mention is Heroes and Villains and that was published in 1969 and it's another book that I read quite early on. I have to include pictures of these. I do have them but they're well thumbed and they are so thin that they've been put away somewhere and I, and I can't find them. But Heroes and Villains is a post-apocalyptic novel as you know I love those sorts of themes and basically humanity has been split into two societies there are the professors who are academics and they live alongside the military in literal ivory towers um you know gated off communities and then you have the barbarians who live outside of these boundaries and um, are wild and live by their own rules and the story is focusing around Marianne who who is the the daughter um of of a professor and she uh she watches her um brother killed by a barbarian um and it really affects her and then one night there's a raid on their gated community and she she she's kind of um kidnapped but very passively she kind of sort of agrees to go along with Jewel who is one of the leaders of the tribe um, not much older than her and she soon finds that this tribe has a real patriarchal society and um, again it's about finding her power but I really loved the the sense of the gothic again in this book and the contrast between the two lives between the professors and the military and and these um, people living in the remnants the wild remnants of of, of the human world um, and again there are parts of this book that that some people would find quite difficult to read around sexual assault so do be aware of that and that features also in in the magic toy shop um but but just a really quick um and um engaging read that really drew me in and made me think about the world in a in a different way so those are five of many 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 books that angela carter wrote during her lifetime and that there are many more that i could recommend but for the sake of the video I wanted to keep it shorter so why should you read Angela Carter many reasons firstly her books are just fantastic if you love magic realism she is kind of the foremother of that in in many respects and um, she has influenced so many other writers uh, so that's another reason Sarah Waters in The Guardian called her a hero um, so if you enjoy Sarah Waters there's the same sort of darkness in, and gothic in, in their writing that they share um, she taught a whole generation of, of writers including uh, Kazuo Shigeru um, she influenced Neil Gaiman um, and Enright lots of other writers who um, who sort of you can sort of see and not similarities but how her writing sort of ble bled into their work um, and also as I mentioned before Camilla Godova I don't know if she's influenced by Angela Carter but I would find it very difficult to believe that she wasn't and um, there's such a strong link between their writing and this sort of surreal magic realism um, and so those are those are reasons in themselves that the fact that uh, you know these are books that are still seen as some of the finest of the 20th century. The fact that her influence is ongoing. Angela Carter's a writer, I don't want to be forgotten. She's just a, 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 a amazing. And there are short reads as well. So that's another reason uh, to pick them up. You know, even if you don't enjoy it and it's not your cup of tea, it's only a short read. It's not going to take too much of your time to, to read them. And I'm sure... Um, you know you're likely to enjoy them and as I say I would start with the the bloody chamber um, to whet your appetites a little bit of an amuse-bouche 
Um, but there's loads of writing and academic work about Angela Carter as well. You should also read her if you're interested in feminist rewritings, if you're interested in the fairy tale and the gothic. Those are all themes that she really, uh, you know, relishes and makes use of. And her imagery is just fabulous. So sensory and vivid um, that it just takes my breath away. It's just fabulous. So have you read any Angela Carter? Are you going to read some now? Maybe have a think about it. Um, and if you have read her and, and, you know, I'd really love to know what your thoughts are. Are you as big a fan as me? If you're not, that's fine. I've said it before. I'll say it again. It's OK if we disagree. But I'd love to know what your thoughts are on any of her writing that you have read or anything that you think I might enjoy based on, on uh, those uh, recommendations. But in the meantime, have a really fabulous week and I hope you've enjoyed the video and I'll speak to you again soon. Take care. Bye.